This is really you now taking ownership of you, of yourself, and why why you are the way you are, why you feel the way you feel, why you think the way you think, why you respond the way you respond. And it, it is just this beautiful evolution of, oh my gosh, just like the amount of like aha moments and... Hey mama, welcome to the Balanced Mom Method Podcast, a safe space to help you transform the way that you approach motherhood and life. If you're a mom struggling with self-worth, overwhelmed with overstimulation, looking to slow down, conquer mom guilt, let go of external pressures, or even embark on a spiritual awakening, you are in the right place. Let's break free from that survival mode cycle by waking up from autopilot and authentically embracing our inner self-love, trust, and connection. Imagine if every single part of your life was perceived through a lens of expansion, value, worthiness, self-awareness, and acceptance. Hey, I'm Jenna, and I've been where you are. I was consumed in the struggles of motherhood and was always in my own head, never feeling good enough. I realized if I wanted to make a change, it started within me. And in finding that freedom, I've dedicated my life's work to helping other moms heal from the inside out to come back home to themselves too. So take my hand, mama. Let's set the foundation to live an intentional life full of peace, presence, confidence, clarity, belief, joy, love, and balance. If you are ready to weed the fluff, get to the root of cultivating real change, and feel connected to yourself on a love-rooted level, let's dive in and discover the power within you. Warm up that cold coffee, pop in your earbuds, and tighten that top knot, mama. Let's overcome together. Hello, hello, beautiful mamas. How are you? Happy Monday. I hope you're having a great day. Today is my birthday. Oh my gosh. 34 years old. I I don't know where the time went. That's the first thing that came to my mind. So silly. But I want to kick off the start of this episode with something for you. And that is we're kicking off Black Friday. We're kicking off a big old sale. Everything within my service portfolio, let's call it. Everything's on sale. Everything will be 33% off through the end of the month. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that, that's it. I, I'm just so thankful. I'm so grateful for the community that we have built for the lives that we are impacting. And just as, as a whole, it's, it's just so, it's so beautiful how connected we all are. And I truly want to help as many people as I can. And that just, that sounds so cliche, but I know that I am here for a very divine reason in the sense of helping others come back home to themselves, to disconnect from those external factors, to disconnect from what the shoulds, the the expectations, the worldly societal pressures, and come back home to ourselves. What do we want? What do, how do we want to feel? And finding that love and that trust for ourselves, that trust that I feel has just, it it gets shoved under the rug just conditionally by society because of all the things that we are conditioned to believe, the things that we are conditioned to do. And it it takes us away from ourselves. It pulls us farther away from tuning back into us and listening to us and, and what we want. And that has just been a very pivotal, eye-opening revelation that, that I have had with, you know, this, this work, this service, my life work that I, I'm called to do. And it's just been a beautiful unfolding and I am here for you. <laughs> so we are kicking off Black Friday, my birthday sale, um, through the end of the month, through November 30th, 2023, everything will be 33% off. Head to naturallyempoweredliving.com forward slash products. And you could enter the code birthday and it should auto populate. If not, shoot me an email. Hello at naturallyempoweredliving.com. I would love to walk you through that. So let's kick this off. This has been probably one of the most pivotal years of my life in, in the best way possible. Like I feel like we have like these core, the core memories, you know, that may, we might have growing up. Like you'll, you remember just these random things when you're, you know, very, very young, um, but I, I just feel like this has been such a pivotal year of my entire life. And I think that is because I have come home to what my life purpose is, what my life's work is. 
And it's been such a beautiful unfolding because and this is all like, I guess my, my, me business talking, but my personal healing journey has been intertwined in that because like I've hit those rock bottoms. I've hit those lowest of the lows and it has all been for this moment. It has all been for the growth and experience and learning and going through those traumatic hardships. It is to be able to help and, and be able to help others possibly going through something similar or just to have that experience to know what it's like, right? Um, and this past year, I mean, I have witnessed miracles and validations of belief and surrender and God's grace and deliverance and have seen the fruit of labor in, in giving it all to him. And I just feel that I have awakened once again. And I mean, this time it's just been like ascending to a whole other level of of living, of, of consciousness, of being alive. And just that the slowness and the presence and the disconnect from that noise, from that outside noise of the world and coming back, connecting to myself and loved ones. Gosh, like there's been, there's been some scary, confusing moments, you know, throughout this year of just feeling like I'm opening a can of worms and like, I don't, do I want to go down this path? And I have just been confirmed again and again and again that yes, like this is my path. This is my life's work. And it's, it's just been this beautiful harmony of, you know, coming back towards love and light and faith. And he has provided and opened so many portals, if you will, to this beautiful human experience that I am living, living in, that we are living in. And I really don't, I don't want this to sound like woo woo and rah rah and all, all, all that. Like I, I've been there. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, like, tell me a few years ago that I would be in energy healing work. Like my mind was like that scientific, I need proof. I need this. I need that. Like that is all woo woo. Like no way. And as I'm like seeing the evidence and like getting those facts, it's just like, holy F, like this is what my path has been coming into, narrowing into all along. And I truly believe with all of me that we as humanity, like we're making this shift and more and more people are waking up. We are understanding the, this connection that we have within humanity and within our souls and our spirits and the power of love and acceptance and unity and that divine higher power and gratitude and all that shit, all the shit feelings that we, that we feel so often within our lives. It doesn't have to be that way. We're conditioned to feel all that shit and we can uncondition ourselves, right? It was just all how we have been conditioned and good, bad, and different. I'm not like bringing up, you know, a childhood or, um, you know, anything specific right now. It, It really is just like collectively as society as a whole, we are conditioned to stay small, to, you know, auto to stress and anxiety and the overwhelm when we can make that shift to auto, to the love and gratitude and expansiveness. So I want this episode to be just a rapid fire of the top 11 pivotal learning moments from this past year. As I am leaving my 33-year-old self and moving on to my 34-year-old self, I, in my meditation, I just like wrote down these 11 things so fast. So, and I don't have like any notes with it. So we're going to see how long this gets or just if I'm just going to go through just like these bullet points, we'll see how it goes. But let's dive in. Let's do this. So number one is I, I used to say for years and years that consistency was the secret sauce to life. Even I think in episode one of this show, I said like simplicity and consistency are the secret sauce to life. And I do believe that. I I still do believe that, but I'm starting to lean towards more of like a bigger picture here of intentionality is that secret sauce to life because we can literally live our lives like a robot consistently, right? Going through the motions day in and day out. When we're intentional, it forces forces us to wake up from that robotic state. It forces us to wake up from autopilot and be and live and be aware of it, right? This is kind of like twofold because it's also within, you know, what that intentionality is within our lives that makes our reality. So we can go out and do 
you know, X, Y, Z and go serve the community, which might look wholesome on the outside, but on the inside, are your intentions pure? Do you have an, a hidden agenda or are you doing, you know, this service for reasons that aren't true to yourself or that's like harmful or just detrimental to like what a, your pure intention is? Does that make sense? So just having that positive, loving intention behind your actions will put you in alignment with your true self and it will bring just exponentially that love and light and positivity back into your life. Number two is full circles. The amount of full circle moments that I've had, because I've, I really have been so deep in just an inner personal healing journey this past year and just the full circles from growing up, like being, you know, little Jenna to, to now just making connections of why I feel or why I think a certain way. And this isn't to bring shame or to bring judgment or to bring negativity to my childhood. This is more just on that deeper level of accepting that we all go through traumatic experiences as a child. We all go through hardships growing up and not play, again, not placing blame. Like our parents do their best and it's within ourselves to then go inward and learn like, Okay, if I, I'm not using me as an example, this is just what is popping in my head. Like if I am a very angry person and turn to aggressive aggression and, you know, I just have a very bad temper, this is actually really opposite for me, (laughs) but like I, and I, you know, maybe, um, have hard, a hard time having trusting relationships because of this anger and this aggression, you got to go inward. And what is that root cause? Why are you so angry, right? So when we accept and look inward to, okay, let's work through this. Let's heal through this and learn what this is. Oh my gosh, like this is, it's it's so healing. It, and this is more like taking ownership of your life. Yes, you were raised a certain way. Yes, you have these morals and values and beliefs from being raised however way you are. This is not to divide a good versus bad upbringing. This is really you now taking ownership of you, of yourself, and why why you are the way you are, why you feel the way you feel, why you think the way you think, why you respond the way you respond. And it, it is just this beautiful evolution of, oh my gosh, just like the amount of like aha moments and things that have clicked and things that like I I've been doing a lot of like meeting my my younger self and my meditations lately and it was it it was very weird at first (laughs) but now I mean it's just it's so incredible because I'm able to like go back into my childhood a little bit and work through some of those things that I see now that I've held on to you know and I'm learning to let go and heal through these things so it's just been a very beautiful experience. Um, number three is you have an egoic voice in your mind and then you have an intuitive voice and learning the discernment between those two is life-changing because the egoic voice is, well, it's, it's wanting to keep you safe, but it also, it's when the limiting beliefs arise. It's when those negative mind soup mindset loops come up. It's your egoic voice is very limited and it knows what it knows. And your brain, like we are created, like we, that fight or flight, you know, that safety response, right? So your egoic voice, it's, it's not a bad thing. We just have to learn how to discern between our ego when that fear arises, when those limiting beliefs come up, when those negative self-talk moments happen to discern between that. And then that intuitive nudge, following your heart, listening to that that inner compass, and then being able to quiet that egoic voice because then all those societal pressures, all those societal expectations are going to be coming in and you shouldn't do that. And no, 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 that's not right. You got to listen to that intuitive voice too. So learning the discernment between those two is absolutely a life changing. Number four is your menstrual cycle has four phases. I may have been in the dark here. I I knew that, but I didn't know that. Like I I never looked into it. So your four menstrual or your 
menstrual cycles have four phases and we need to honor them. Oh my goodness, we need to honor them. I'm still learning a lot about this, but we know that we have four, maybe you don't, I didn't, but we have four phases. The menstrual phase, obviously when you're bleeding, the follicular phase, the ovulation phase, and the luteal phase. And I I knew what, like, okay, I know when we menstruate, right? That's when we're bleeding, and I know when you ovulate. Okay, that's, you know, your ovulation phase. So the other two, I, I had no idea just how the connections and the links to my mood and to my appetite even and to my energy levels it is i feel like we we live on this clock of you know the 24-hour day clock right and of of course like that's the world that we live in i'm not i'm not telling you not to but to be able to honor your body also in that time because there needs to be days of rest there's times when our female feminine body literally needs to rest because how our innate nature is following those four phases of our menstrual cycle. So I, I, within this, I also started following the moon cycles and the moon phases and learning like how we literally sync up to the moon. And I, ironically enough, cause I think the new moon is when the majority of women around that time get their cycle so like day one is the new moon day one would be your your menstruation when when you get your period and i'm more on the full moon cycle and that's really beautiful i think it's called the red moon i think i i'd have to look into that again but it's very much about like healing and and being an intuitive and helping others like rise up within their energy and i was like oh my gosh like just this validation right so it's just I have gone down a rabbit hole so many nights. I downloaded like a moon cycle app and um, it's just so fascinating how we are so connected, yes, to one another, but also to Mother Earth, like to to this this planet, this beautiful nature and, and cycle and universe that we are a part of. It is, it's so divine and fascinating and it just made like I'm. I have to stop talking about this because you like you go down these rabbit holes, right? Um, so so beautiful. So number five is when you slow down to actually listen to what you want and how you want to feel, your connection and trust and love with yourself will grow. And this kind of goes back to I think the first tip or not the first tip, the first uh, pivotal learning lesson in the sense of disconnecting from the external pressures and expectations and society and coming back home to ourselves when we actually slow down and listen to what that inner guidance says to listen to what that inner compass says what do you want how do you want to feel and i just this just popped in so i want to say it is thinking back to i think i shared this on a previous episode of the the coin flip exercise like when you have a 50-50 decision to make. Like it's either this or it's either this or it's either yes or it's either no. And you flip this coin and as the coin is in the air, tune into yourself and think of what do I want this coin to land on? It doesn't matter what the coin actually lands on. You're tuning into yourself because you know when that coin is up in the air, you want it to be one way or the other. And if you don't, then it's really, it's not an important decision. Like whatever, go buy the coin toss, right? But if it is like this pivotal moment within like, I don't know what to do, think of that. If I flip a coin and it's up in the air, what do I want that coin to land on? That has been so pivotal within my life. Um, and it's crazy because I forget where I learned that. It was years ago. And through the certification course that I'm going through, it's been brought up again. And I was like, I know that I did not know um, Julie Jancis, you know, this this program years ago when I learned that coin toss flip. So I'm like curious. I'm like, where did I learn that initially? Because I just, I love making these links to, you know, your past to where you're at now and things like that. But anyways, number six is when you live your life through a lens of love and gratitude, versus fear and entitlement and any of those negative emotions, more of that, more of that love and gratitude will come into your life or, you know, more of that fear or negativity will come into your life. So what you focus on expands. And this is so much easier said than done. Like how many times have you heard that, that quote within, 
you know, some verbiage or another. What you focus on expands. What you, where your energy goes, your reality flows. Like there's so many different ways to say this, but it's so true. So actually listening to that, that quote, like what you focus on will become your reality. So I knew for so long, like I was living in that meg- negative mindset loop, right? I was living in that anxiety. I was living in that fear. And I'm not saying I don't anymore, but I, my, my um, default was that. The, the default was the negativity, the anxiety, the overwhelm. And what, what do you think? Like you're putting up like this barrier. You're putting up this, this fear barrier, And what do you expect to come into your life, right? That's what you're giving off. So of course, let it be, think of it as, well, I'm focusing on the fear. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, you know, the bad things or I'm gonna see the negativity, right? So you could think of it like that or actually think of it in a literal sense of like your energy is giving off those low vibrational vibrations, frequencies versus, you know, having those high love vibrational frequencies, and more of that will be coming into your life or thinking more of the, of the thought mind process is if I'm focusing on the gratitude, the love, the abundance, that's what I'm looking for, right? So it comes down to the, the simplicity of if you're focusing on the fear, that's what you're going to be looking for. If you're focusing on the love, that's what you're going to be looking for. It's just how we, how we work. So however you want to think of it, energy wise, or just your mind wise, it all comes back to the same principle of that, what you focus on becomes your reality. It expands. Number seven, the connection to how energy healing truly is to science is fascinating. <laughs> and I feel it's it's a very science, silent topic, but I do feel that it's coming out more within, within our society, within our world. But, and this is me putting my opinions out there, and I don't like to really do that on the show in, in the sense of like politics or healthcare or pharmaceutical America or anything like that, I, I 100, 1000% believe to seek a professional medical help. Like if, if you're struggling, 100% seek a medical, medical professional. However, on the flip side, I also feel that a lot of our Western medicine is driven by money. It's driven by pharmaceutical America is driven by how much money we can make for prescribing this or doing this and not getting to that root of what the issue is. And I'm not saying like that, that it's every, everywhere, but as a whole, I, I truly do feel that in, in a sense. So again, take that opinion aside. I sh- should edit that out because I, I really don't want to ever be biased one way or the other. However, the connection to how energy healing is comes down to science, to how we are created. Quantum physics, think of the chemistry, think of like all those science classes that you have growing up, like everything is made up of energy, down to the atoms, the last molecule, right? The subatomic particles. And that's us too. You, we don't learn about us. We learn about everything else, like, you know, in the world, let it be like electricity or, um, you know, the light rays, gamma rays, whatever that might be, the microwaves. But we are also energy. And it's just so fascinating. The more that I am learning about this, the more just va- validation for me, because I, I know that it was a really big, um, growing up in a specific religion that I grew up in and then growing up having a, a health degree um, background, it was very hard to now look into like energy healing and like a holistic, just you, yeah, holistic approach it was very hard to almost uncondition to be more open to seeing on all sides of the situation. Does that make sense? So yeah, that it's just been very pivotal for me. (laughs) Number eight is find your vices, acknowledge them and work through them to heal. You deserve to be yourself for yourself and not numb out or silence any part of you. I'm going to use social media or alcohol or, um, you know, weed or, um, what else could it be? Emotional eating or, um, you know, calling and gossiping. It could be so many things. So finding those vices that you use 
to numb yourself out or to silence any part of you, to silence that anxiety, to that stress, right? I'm not saying to take them out of your life completely, right? To, to be sober or to not be on social media or to not make that phone call to a friend to vent. I'm not saying that whatsoever. But when we acknowledge what a vice is within our life, we can now take that next step to not be so dependent on it, right? You, because you deserve, like what I said, you deserve to be yourself for yourself and not numb out anything, any piece of yourself. I know we need breaks. I know we need resets. So again, I'm not saying to like go cold turkey on anything, but it, it's just been, I, I've witnessed it, right? With social media, it, for me, it was a very addictive mental health struggle for me that I would get so consumed in in a lot of not so empowering topics or I would get stuck in the comparison game or, you know, you see things that aren't real, but then when you're consuming that over and over and over, like what I, going back to what you focus on expands, right? It physically takes a toll on you. So by taking that break or just by witnessing it um, and acknowledging it and taking maybe a step back or just being more aware of what is going on, you know, I personally witness the weight and anxiety lift and it, it's been, it's, Again, pivotal. It's one of my 11, right? So number nine is being fully present in what you are doing. It not only brings you you more clarity and satisfaction for yourself, for for your life, for your uh, surroundings, but it deepens your relationships with yourself and with others to a whole other level. When you are actually present in your life, how simple does that sound? But by golly, it is not easy. So be fully present where you are. Number 10 is emotions can get stuck in our body and compound over time, which can cause physical ailments like like our anxiety, like our stress. So by staying connected and in tune with ourselves, we can commit to just an ever-growing and evolving and and healing journey within our, our life. So this has been, this is like my new... I guess, fascination within like the energy healing and science combination. Maybe I should have put this one by that, but it's, it's just really powerful because I have seen it in multiple books that I have read in multiple, um, like the certification that I'm in, it's in there also, but I've just seen it in different, what's the word I'm looking for? Credible sources. And it might not all be described in the same way. But it comes back to like that that core principle of it, and it's it's so fascinating. It is so so fascinating. Again, I'm not I'm not saying that we don't need you know hospital care or we don't need to go see the doctor. I'm not saying that whatsoever. Um, there is definitely a time and place, but the work that we can do for ourselves it's monumental. It can move mountains. Again, when we become aware to it that you know, these emotions can get stuck. Tune into your body. Why do I feel this tightening in my chest? Why do I feel this ache in my stomach, right? And then the more that you feel it, it compounds and hardens and, you know, solidifies over time and it can cause these other ailments. And it's, it's so fascinating. And I'm like so deep into learning more about this right now. Um, the certification I'm going through doesn't really go in deep into this, but it's, it was mentioned. And I'm like, that is my sign that this is like the next step that I'm diving into. <laughs> and number 11 is there is a difference between being mean and setting boundaries to protect yourself, your family, your energy. So coming from myself, a people pleaser through and through, there is a difference here. And it's, it's showing yourself respect when you're able to set those healthy boundaries for yourself, for your time, for your energy, for your family's, you know, time and energy also. So to unravel this a little further, maybe in a different light is being, you could still set these boundaries, but still be kind and respectful through it. So this is where like that, that the difference comes in. You don't have to be mean. There's a difference between being mean and being kind and respectful, but still setting boundaries. So this isn't something that I like have just learned, but it's something that I have always believed, but I feel like there's been so many experiences and situations that I've really noticed throughout this year. And I don't know how many times I've been blown away 
by the surprise that I feel from someone when I make that random phone call to a customer service line and you know they're asking like, hi, what can I do for you today? And before I dive into what I need, I'm asking, hi, Gloria, how are you today? And it's just like that pause and then it, the whole energy changes, right? Just by starting out a conversation kind, even if I'm calling to complain about something or you know what, whatever that might be, it still is about being respectful and being kind. Or think of it like in a different point of view. If you, if you have a disagreement with someone or you have a different point of view than someone, different opinion, it's no one's fault. And there shouldn't any be resentment or hatred or comparison or jealousy or whatever, the, you know, these feelings come up when like you have a dispute and you like guys don't see eye to eye, right? There can still be an unsaid mutual respect or acceptance, if that's the right word. And I, I shouldn't even put mutual in there because I know that a lot of times it, it could be hard to do this because there is not that mutual kindness or respect. So take out mutual. But it's it's almost about... How are we living our lives? How are we responding with our voice? How are we acting with our values of being kind and respectful? I read a quote the other day and this memory came up in this meditation as I like wrote down, you know, number 11. And I was like, oh, is this number 12? Like, is this another one? And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Like this goes hand in hand in this because I know that there's going to be someone's mind who is going to think the extreme here like violence abuse and that this is not what i'm talking about i i just think that there's a point within our healing journey where we stop trying to convince other people to do the right thing or to think a certain way or to be a certain someone and we just accept them for what they are who they are we might observe them their choices and it might help us understand their character. And you might decide like how I'm going to allow or live or make or set these boundaries within my life. And it doesn't mean that you don't have to be kind or respectful through it. I hope that that makes sense because I love, 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 love going so deep. But it's hard sometimes on a platform like this because it's so one-ended that I know that there's different, like there's so many different types of um, listeners that our, our brains work in different ways. We interpret things differently and you're not able to like ask me a question or like, what do you actually mean by this and continue on with the conversation? So I hope that that made sense in the sense of there's a difference between being mean and setting boundaries with kindness and respect. All right. There have been, I know there's been so many more learning pivotal lessons but these were the first 11 that just flowed through me so quickly during my meditation. And I really just had bullet points. And that was really beautiful that here we are at 31 minutes. So I said a little prayer before I hit record on this. And I said, let my pure intentions come through. And I think, I hope, <laughs> I hope that I did that. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that one or many of these resonated with you, helped you feel seen or heard or empowered, or maybe opened your eyes to ask more questions, to ask yourself more questions. Shoot me a, an email and ask me questions. Hello at naturallyempoweredliving.com. I am an open book. My inbox is always open. I would love to hear from you. And reminder, again, head to naturallyempoweredliving.com forward slash products and enjoy 33% off through the end of the month, the Balanced Mom Method online course. I added a couple more services. We have a foundational guidance. It's like a 60-minute intensive, you and me, just really hash things out that you're struggling with and create a plan for you to move forward to that next step. It's kind of like that that foundational foundational guidance is what it's called, but it's just a 60-minute intensive. Um, I have group coaching. I have one-on-one -on -one coaching. I am going to be certified by the end of the year with energy healing, so I'll probably have another sale like with that to get really hit the ground running with that, but it's really been a beautiful year. I, we've been on this podcast for just over a year, a year and a month. And it's, it's been so life-changing and expansive and loving. And I am just so grateful to be here. So thank you for you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Have an amazing week. And if you're in the U S happy Thanksgiving and happy holidays to all my loves until next week, as always simply be you, you have everything inside of you to reach your breakthrough. I'm sending my love and light. Rewritable.
Dr. Polly, please give my review. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending this sacred time with me on the Balanced Mom Method Podcast. I am sending you so much love and covering you in light, praying this episode has helped you in some way. And if it has, I'd be so grateful if you left a written review sharing how it's impacted your life. It truly lights me up hearing how you are on your way to your breakthrough. And also, please share this episode with another mom who may be struggling to remind her that we are never alone and to help give her that empowerment to take that first step. And be sure to check the show notes for additional ways to connect with me, our motherhood empowerment community, and if and when it feels good to you, learn how we could work together to help you reclaim your power, mama. Thank you. I appreciate all you are and all you do. Sending my love and light.